Okay, uh, thank you for this uh, speaking slot. I don't really have a presentation ready, so I'll just give you a quick overview of, of what uh, I'm working on. This is actually the third um, data science talk. So the basic idea is that uh, we have all these metrics, but what really what really matters at the end of the day? So what we do um, is we provide a, a network service. Actually, it's a Wi-Fi service. Uh, we do Railtel, uh, Link NYC, and we provide a certain level of service. Right now, it's availability. So we promise uh, two nines. Whenever it goes below a certain level, we want to know what uh, what the root cause is. So the basic idea is we have so many metrics. A lot of them don't really matter because there's so much redundancy in the network. Even if a router fails, who cares that you're going to still be tra transporting customer traffic around the surviving nodes. So uh, basically, uh, this is very similar to uh, George's talk and uh, Matthias's early talk. Uh, but it's a little bit different. Instead of having CSV files, we want to automate the processes. We're constantly getting uh, Prometheus metric data. Uh, we're pumping it into various different uh, intermediate data stores. We probably want to in improve the uh, integration of that, so we're talking with some folks here to try to make it more seamless. But basically what we do is we pump it from uh, Prometheus to OpenTSDB, the big query. I do my analytics. <clears throat> so. The way we do analytics is actually a multiple phases, but the basic idea is that we, uh, very similar to what George did, he put it to R. So we have something called uh, Colab Notebook, which I noticed George did the same thing, but I guess he's using a Jupyter Notebook as the open source version. Then we come up with the analysis. So the, here's an example of, um, this takes too long to run as a demo, but basically this is an example of the Colab Notebook. And the basic idea is that we have so many different uh, analytics algorithms, how do you know which is the best one? How do you want to know which one actually, what the, is actually accurate? So what our approach is that we take about 800 different metrics and we have to process it in different ways to uh, normalize it. But then we run it through all the different classifiers, but we also do, actually this is not really uh, public yet. So if you don't take pictures, I appreciate that. Thanks, sorry about that. And uh, I don't know if I, I don't even get approval to, to speak about this, but hopefully it's going to be okay. But basically what we do, what we do is we actually evaluate how accurate it is because we, we bust it up into training data and test data. So the test data is not contaminated with any of the training data. And then we take the best, uh, the best accurate uh, uh, results and that will be the used for prediction. So in this case here, I just finished running it right now, but basically here you can see that uh, Instead of getting uh, CSV uh, data, uh, the nice thing about this is we can actually pump it into a data frame directly by doing a SQL command. Uh, the main key thing is that we have the right libraries to import it. So um, I'll show you real quick here um, that uh, here's all these different SQL queries that we're taking the top predictors. We don't even know which one's any, uh, what one really matters. So we run it through all the different classifiers and then we actually evaluate it. So I'll just jump real quick um, to some of these. Uh... So, so we tried basically, uh, most of the linear regression uh, classifiers are completely worthless because most of these problems are not linear. So I think Sudesh had also talked about that when he asked earlier on. What, uh, uh, we also tried, uh, as uh, uh, Georgia did, lasso regression. The nice thing about that is that instead of having to do all this factor analysis, it will regularize all the coefficients down to zero, the ones that are useless, and it will actually uh, give high weights to ones that are, are not useless. Like, for example, here, this is a station. Uh, the three stars means it actually has a, uh, a very low p-value, and uh, that's a useful uh, metric. So here, you can see here, amongst all the different metrics, these are the ones that actually matter for the data set and for the problem we're trying to solve. In this case here, my response variable is the SLO level. So basically, in a nutshell, what this thing does is you have all this type of data, what really matters from the, for you, for your particular objective, and this will reduce it. So this was trying to automate a lot of these tasks that you don't have to do manually. But the best results so far are using um, support vector machines. And, uh, the re and it's pretty obvious because these are nonlinear solutions. And um, here's an example of, uh, I think I have a quick write-up here. 
here's an example of a very simple solution that helped a lot pinpoint uh, what's really going on. So in this case here, as you can see, the, a decision tree was made, and we actually did some results making sure it's the optimal number of uh, nodes, as well as to see if any uh, benefit was uh, achieved by pruning, and it wasn't. And we were also you know, verifying that we're getting good uh, mean squared error. So in this case here, we were able to pinpoint which metric really mattered and what time of day the problem was uh, actually impacting our SLO level. And that's about it. That's about it.